the money shot. Undeniable singular, the, the Oprah shot. The Oprah shot? How you doing? This is Corey Hunter and welcome to another episode of Our Film School. There is a lot to pick apart when watching this movie. I heard a lot of interpretations and so I'm going to let you know where I stand on the film's meaning. So here we have Jordan Peele's third film following Get Out and Us. It can be argued that his first two films overlap into the horror genre. But here we have more of a sci-fi movie, although that too can be argued. But it definitely falls into suspense. The film centers around the Haywood family, who owns a horse farm in California that provides horses as needed for movies and TV shows and commercials. Due to an unfortunate accident, Otis, head of the family, is killed, leaving the farm to his son OJ and daughter Emerald. Neither of them is exactly cut out for the job, leading to financial problems. This forces them to sell some of their horses to a nearby western theme park. Eventually, the Haywood family becomes aware of a UFO, or at the very least, that's what they believe the figure to be. They figure out the UFO lives in the same valley as their farm and they come up with a plan. Their plan is to use this opportunity to profit by getting the first authentic footage of the UFO, and therefore saving their farm and family legacy. And that's the gist of it. Now there are other major plot points that focus on others such as Jupe who owns the western theme park with motivations of his own. There is a character by the name of Gordy who plays a major part in Jupe's past. And then we have other characters such as Angel and Holtz. Just so you can keep up, this is Otis Jr aka OJ. He's our protagonist. And this is Emerald, his sister. They are the heirs to the Haywood Horse Farm and descendants of the first black man in person to ever be captured on film, or as Emerald puts it. Did you know that the very first assembly of photographs to create a motion picture was a two second clip of a black man on a horse? And that man is my great great grandfather. Great. There's another great grandfather. This lets us know the Haywood family is special. By knowing of their ancestor, we learn three things about the family. They are threat setters, tamers, and entertainers. Their fathers seem to possess all these qualities while these qualities are spread amongst brother and sister. With OJ being a tamer of horses and Emerald leaning more into entertainment as someone possessing many talents. Then we have Gordy and Jupiter. Ricky Park, aka Chupé is a former child star who is a survivor of a hit show after a brutal attack on set back in 97. He has since masked his trauma under the banner of capitalism, exploitation, and showmanship. Gordy is the chimpanzee who is the cause of that brutal attack on set. We have Antler Holtz, a famous DP and cinematographer who spent his life in luxury, searching through endless footage for that perfect shot. And finally, we have Andrew Torres, an employee of Fry's Electronics who is instrumental in helping the Haywoods in a number of ways, but ultimately may very well be forgotten. So rather than spelling out the entire story in detail, that was all a refresher as I'm assuming you already saw the film, and if not, spoiler alert. What does it all mean? metaphorically speaking. On one level, it all comes down to exploitation. The Haywards are black, Trupe is Asian, and Angel is Latino with the UFO, a apex predator that consumes and dominates all within its domain, is white. Therefore, on one level, they are all prey to the UFO that attacks anything it feels is a threat to its existence and status. It becomes apparent that the UFO especially target those who stare straight at it. This is given a lot of context. For one, slave owners didn't take it lightly when looked straight in their eyes by blacks, seeing it as threatening and blacks as not submissive. It also hides itself in the cloud, becoming that more powerful because it can't always be seen. That inspired fear because the threat is unknown because you know you're constantly being watched. Ultimately, we have the colored flags and two people that proves to be instrumental in taking the UFO down. The colored flags usually being attached to things that actually hurts the UFO, 
But metaphorically, this can represent people of color whom, when united, can bring down the white oppressor. Why the Western fail in setting? So, the majority of this film takes place on a horse farm in a Western theme park. Like in Western films, we see more land than structures, and OJ reflects the classic hero in those films, the skilled yet almost silent protagonist. Now, Western films, or more properly known as American Westerns, reflect a time in American history where America acquired a bunch of land and encouraged people to move west. In the time, shortly after the Civil War, it was a time of lawlessness, great tensions, and expansion. But perhaps the two largest characteristics of this era was, for one, it's very American, where Japan have samurais, and Europe their knights of medieval time, America have their cowboys. Second, it was a time of great exploitation. The land was exploited for gold, land was taken from natives, prostitution was the norm, cowboys emerged as a way of living, that is, taming cattle and people was exploited for profit, with the construction of railroads a prime example of this. This all fits nicely in the theme of exploitation. So what's in a name? So we have our protagonist, OJ and Emerald. Obviously OJ is a reference to OJ Simpson, a name associated with spectacle and exploitation as the tragedy surrounding his trial was constantly monetized. Then we have Emerald, perhaps named after Emerald City from The Wizard of Oz. Emerald City represented an illusion in the form of a spectacle that can solve our problems while the true forces hide in the shadows. There is even a spinning cyclone in the film. Then we have Angel, a guiding force in our fortunes but never receiving praise. Jupe's name, which is short for Jupiter, might serve to be a bit more ironic. Jupiter is associated with Zeus and the planet, both major forces of nature. On the surface, Jupiter doesn't seem like a big deal. However, within the context of the film, when compared to his peers around him, he is far more successful. Where the Haywards are forced to sell horses to Jupiter, and Angel works a dead-end job, Jupiter runs an entire theme park. Furthermore, due to his ego, he believes himself special enough to elude the wrath of the UFO. Therefore, his name is a reference of his status and ego. So, why is so much time spent on the character of Gordy? Gordy is the chimpanzee who was the star of a 90s sitcom, with Jupe as a co-star. Due to unforeseen circumstances, Gordy goes berserk, killing some of his human co-stars and leaving one deformed due to his vicious attack. However, Jupe who was present for the attack, managed to survive the ordeal without a scratch. The film sheds a lot of light on this incident, which may leave many thinking, what's the point? It wasn't an experience instrumental in bringing down the big baddie. It wasn't an experience that necessarily had an impact on our protagonist. However, it spoke volumes in terms of the themes of the movie, especially that main theme I keep saying over and over exploitation. The film tackles Hollywood as a subject, as show business, and how it creates a vicious cycle of exploitation that finds itself in our culture. With exploitation connected to capitalism, we get a system where money can mean more than people and animals. This is explored thoroughly towards the start of the film, when OJ, working a gig, takes his horse on set. The ill treatment they receive have its roots in exploitation. Neither OJ nor the horse, Lucky, was treated with respect and even belittled so that others could feel higher on the food chain. What mattered most was money and they were being exploited for such, much like the case of Gordy. Now Gordy represent what happens when one is pushed too far, one will rise up and retaliate. Gordy is also a cautionary tale of what happens when someone tries to befriend a predator rather than tame it. But ultimately, it's the tale of that vicious cycle of exploitation. It's a fragile balance where the shoe can always end up on the other foot. Get it? Jupe represents the exploited, much like Gordy. However, he, surprise, surprise, continues that vicious cycle. 
when people don't matter as much as money they will do anything to get money in order to regain their value and power we see this in Jupe's room which he dedicated to Gordy. once again he's turning tragedy into treasure Jupe was clearly traumatized by the incident with Gordy, but rather than work through that trauma he monetized it because that's all he know how to do therefore when faced with the ufo he treats it much like Gordy. An animal he can make an agreement with. Because he couldn't work through his trauma, he never learned the right lesson. That you can't enter an agreement with a predator. Rather, it has to be tamed. Therefore, Jupe's story is that of a overinflated ego, which in turn leads to his reckless behavior. After surviving Gordy and sharing a moment with him, Jupe got in his head that he was special, that somehow the rules didn't apply to him. And this led to his destruction. Ultimately, the story of Jupe and Gordy represent as a whole the vicious cycle. No position is permanent as power is fragile and therefore no one is exempt from its destructive power. Gordy, once the exploited becomes the predator. Jupe, once the exploited becomes the explorer and then the prey. So by the time the focus is shift back on the Haywood family, we understand the rules. Nope, it's about the spectacle. It's about the thing that we have, all of us have, in chasing something outside of ourselves or focusing on something that's far out, outside of ourselves, so much so that we don't realize what we have around us that is worth appreciating until it's too late. The spectacle. It's that thing we are chasing, that thing we make our primary focus and therefore cause us to lose sight of the things that really matter. With that said, the definition of film gift for spectacle is broad. It's Hollywood, fame, fortune, celebrity, validation, glory. It's reality TV, it's streaming services, it's social media, and all the things that capture our attention and turns us toxic. This is shown pretty directly by the UFO, who is the spectacle itself. Those who look at it is consumed by it. We can avoid destruction by looking away, which seems to me like a parallel of Sodom and Gomorrah. But a more direct parallel would be between that of the spectacle and a horse. Just as a horse may raise up when looked straight in the eyes, so does the spectacle. At its core is a beast that operates on certain rules. All the characters in the film saw the spectacle as something different and in many ways as a way of attaining their dreams and this isn't necessarily wrong. No one is saying that social media and TV is bad, but it is reckless to not understand the dangers of these platforms or even personal goals such as a promotion at work. The danger being that our want can consume us. The characters in this film all prove to be players to different degrees. However, the destructive force of the UFO isn't limited to only them, but also the spectators. Something simply having your attention can be enough to consume you, as shown by the crowd devoured by the UFO alongside Jupe. Now, we shouldn't let it go without reflecting on how the UFO camouflages itself, and that is within the cloud. It's hiding itself, and so on one level, the spectacle can go unnoticed although influencing us if we're not alert. Also the cloud sits above us, in the sky as if presenting itself as cloud nine, something containing all our hopes and dreams. And that's how the characters look at this cloud. They look up and see some kind of hope, with those unaware of what that cloud really contains becoming the most vulnerable. At the end of the day, the spectacle is just a beast and it needs to be tamed like any other beast. Now usually when we think of a beast, we think of a lion or bear, an animal that can be wrathful, but here the parallel is made with a horse. A horse is powerful, but it can also be majestic. However, if we lose sight of how dangerous it is, the horse can harm us. Therefore the spectacle, just like the horse, needs to be tamed or we run the risk of being consumed. So what do the characters see when they see the spectacle? Well, what Jupe see is fame and fortune, as we already picked apart. Aunt La Hulse, the famous cinematographer, sees glory. He's willing to give up everything in his pursuit of getting that impossible shot. This begs the question, 
Whatever it is you are chasing, what is it worth to you? And is it worth sacrificing everything for it? Then we have Angel, who feels invisible as he works a dead-end job, and very likely wounded as his girlfriend left him for a CW show. What he is chasing is validation. His journey asks the question, who does the validate? Then we have Emerald, who's doing all this for money. Now, the Hayward family is different from all the others. Everyone else may or may not know what they are dealing with, but the Haywoods know exactly what the spectacle is, and that's a beast in name of Tammy. Because of that, Emerald never forgets exactly what she's dealing with. Unlike Hulse, who might get the perfect shot and is willing to die for it, Emerald is capable of letting that dream go and become satisfied with what she can attain, a photograph of the UFO. Because she's grounded, she gets exactly what she needs without becoming consumed by this beast. Before we continue, let's not forget about the TMZ guy. He is much like Juppay in that he sees a paycheck. However, more than anyone else, his pursuit is a reckless one. One without him fully understanding what it is he's chasing. Because of his recklessness, he crash and burns fairly quickly. And finally, we have OJ, and what he sees when he sees the spectacle, something Emerald also began to see, is Jean Jacket. Now, I know you may be asking the question, who is Jean Jacket? Jean Jacket is a horse from the Haywoods youth that was in need of breaking and taming. Emerald felt she should have been the one to tame the horse, but ultimately, it was OJ who was taught to. Truly seeing the UFO for what it really is, OJ was able to draw on his experiences and training and ultimately play an important role in bringing this creature down. He's able to do this because he sees the UFO as a dangerous animal that can be tamed and worked if handled correctly. So what was happening exactly with the UFO and his transformation at the end? Well, the spectacle was simply putting on more of a spectacle as it became more and more aggressive. As a viewer, we was looking at it wondering exactly what we were looking at, and that's exactly what the UFO was trying to achieve. Like the Haywood family, we should have learned the lesson by the end of the film. It was simply a creature, puffing up as it consumed all in its path. This is a callback to Juppé and Gordy, this apex predator that once sat above everything at the top of the food chain was now the very thing being toyed with and exploited. Once again, power is a fragile thing where any can be consumed in this vicious cycle. Much like Juppé, the UFO dies due to its inflated ego. And quite literally, if you saw the film, it doesn't get any more straightforward than that. So what's up with that Scorpion King hoodie? At the end of the film, we see our hero put on a bright orange hoodie with the title Scorpion King written on it. For the final showdown, it's too bright to be ignored, so let's explore it. All the wardrobe in this film was given a great deal of thought, but here, we're just going to focus on the hoodie. On a logical level, OJ wears it to draw the attention of the UFO, but it's a little deeper than that. The Scorpion King was a decent summer blockbuster featuring the rock that came out in 2002. The Haywoods worked on the crew training horses for the movie. So on one level, it reflects a key moment from OJ's past, the first time he worked with his father on a major set. And that's the origin of the hoodie itself. It's a relic from that film and moment. We later find out camels were used instead of the horses, and therefore the gig didn't bring the Haywoods the success they were hoping for. Just as glory, fame, and fortune eluded their great 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 grandfather, it eluded them again during the making of that film. So on another level, it represents the Haywood's missed opportunity and the vow to finally capture that glory that had been eluding the Haywood family for generations. Also, it was for this film, OJ was being taught to break in and tame the horse Jean Jacket. Although their father overlooked Emerald for this role, OJ acknowledged her. So yet on another level, this hoodie represents a critical moment between brother and sister from their past. Therefore, this hoodie serves to remind us of the Haywood family's history, their obstacles and motivations, which fuse the themes of this film 
as we head to the resolution of those themes. Yeah, a month and a half later, I didn't know what I was doing. He just sent me a movie list. It was uh, Close Encounters of the Third Kind, Jaws, and No Country for Old Men, 2001 A Space Odyssey, and Alien. And I watched all these movies and I'm like, what the hell is he doing? What is this movie? I know all that is a lot, but a far more simple explanation of this film is that it's a tribute to other films. The films this film plays tribute to are Close Encounters of the Third Kind, Jaws, No Country for Old Men, 2001 A Space Odyssey, and Alien. Once we see what all these movies are about, we can then see elements from all these films in Nope. Close Encounters of the Third Kind is about a everyday blue collar worker who life changes after an encounter with a UFO. No Country for Old Men is about the perils of a lawless land where balance and dread rules. 2001 A Space Odyssey is known for its symbolic imagery. Alien is a horror film featuring an alien. And finally we have Jaws, a movie about the everyday man who must learn to overcome his own shortcomings while being thrust in a situation where he must hunt a beast. And if you take all these films, put it in a pot, shake it up, and add a twist of joint and pill in it, we get the film No. So there we have it. To sum it all up, the UFO properly named in the film as Jean Jacket represents the American dream. It's something that is camouflaged by something else. It's a magnetic and manipulative trap that isn't kind to anyone, especially some more than others that can consume us if not careful do not forget to like share and subscribe i appreciate you and as always until next time bro what you see something about the clouds that's big how big big you think whatever kill pops is out there right here you are going to witness an absolute spectacle. So what happens next?